Hello and welcome to yet another tutorial by Davies Media Design. My name is Michael Davies and in today's tutorial I'm going to be showing you guys how to blend two images together like you see here using the gradient tool in GIMP and this is also using a layer mask and this is a pretty simple technique but it can create a really cool result. I am of course using GIMP version 2.10.6 for this tutorial which is the latest version of GIMP at the time of this recording. But of course, before we get into that, I just want to direct you guys over to our website at daviesmediadesign.com. As always, we have tons of GIMP video and text tutorials on here, so definitely check that out. You can also enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And you'll get some really awesome GIMP rewards in return. And I'll include a link to this as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So here is one of the photos I'll be using for today's tutorial. I got this from pixabay.com for free. And of course, I'll include a link to this. For this one, I just downloaded the 1920 by 1279 version. There's also a second image I used in this tutorial. And you can also download that for free on Pixabay. For that one, I downloaded the 4000 pixel version. And of course, I'll include a link to that in the description as well. All right, so for starters, what you need to do is you need to open up both of these images in GIMP. So go to File, Open and you're going to want to search for these photos on your computer. In my case, I know these are in the download folder in my computer. And here is that image I want to use right here. So I'll click open and that'll open this up as a new composition in GIMP. And I've done that as well for the second image I have here. And of course, I can also just go to file open recent. And if I've opened this file up recently, I can just open it that way. So the original file here was 4,000 pixels, as I said, so I did download the larger version of this image. And if you look over here at this image, you can see the dimensions are 1920 by 1279. So we want to combine these two images, but we want to make sure they are relatively the same size so that one of these isn't going to be huge when we bring it over into the other one. But something else I'm looking at here with these images is the main subject. So I want this subject to look the same size as this one. And as you can tell, this subject is a little bit smaller in the overall image here uh, compared to our other subject. So basically what that tells me is I have to scale this image down, but I don't want to scale it all the way down to the same 1920 dimension that this uh, image over here is. So I want to leave this one a little bit larger. So what I'll do is I'll go to image, scale image, and what I'm going to do is just scale this down to 3000 pixels as the width and I'll hit the tab key and that should automatically adjust the height of your image as well. If you're planning on printing this, you can keep this at a high resolution. Otherwise, if you're using this for the web, I recommend changing this to something like 72 pixels per inch and make sure your quality is set to no halo as the interpolation. That'll just ensure that when you scale this down, it'll retain a lot of the original quality. So it'll keep the high quality of the image. So I'll just hit scale to scale this down. Once I've done that, there's a few options I have. I can go to edit copy and that'll copy this layer and then come over here to my other composition and hit control V or go to edit paste and that'll paste this as a floating selection layer. Click on that layer and click right here to create a new layer and that'll put this image on its own new layer now into our composition. And let me delete this just to show you guys another option. So another option is to come over here to our image, click and drag this tab and hover it over this tab here. And then with our mouse still clicked and still dragging, I'll just hover over this image here and release. And that will drop my image into our other composition. You can see the main difference here is that this is now called dropped buffer instead of having the original name of the uh, image layer right here. But either way, those two methods are going to get your image into your other composition so that now both of these images here are combined. So over here, you'll see there is a top layer called drop buffer. And let me just name this winter image and hit enter. And then if I hide this layer here below that is the picture of this model here and she's in the mountains. So let me just rename this mountains by double clicking on the layer. So I've got my two layers here. Now we have to combine them. So I'm going to grab my move tool over here in my toolbox. And what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to click and drag so we can see the girl in our composition here. And now the trick is we want this girl to be the same size as the girl in our image uh, in the layer below. And we can't really tell right now because when I unhide this layer, you can't see the layer below it. But if I grab my scale tool over here, what I can do is I can click over here on our winter layer and then click with the scale tool on here. And you'll see that the 
opacity of this image now has decreased so we could see through it. It's a little bit transparent. The way that I was allowed to do that is over here, it says show image preview. And so while I'm scaling this image, if I have this checked, it'll show me a preview of the scaled image. So the scaled down image in our case. And then we can adjust the image opacity here of that preview. And that allows us to see the layer below while we scale. So this gives us a better idea of the sizes of the girls in our two photos. So now I'm going to grab the middle here and I can just move this over here and see how much bigger uh, the one girl is right now than the other. So as you can see, her feet end a little bit higher than the other girls. So what I'll do is I'll come over here to the left corner here and click and drag and that'll just scale this up a little bit. And I'll just scale it up until basically these two are the same height. And I can come over here to the top right and click and drag and then I'll scale this up. So now these two are about the same size and I could click on these four squares right here to move this back into place. And so I'm just kind of eyeballing this to make sure that the feet are still aligned here, same with the heads. And these don't have to be perfect, but I'll go with that right there and just click scale. And now we have our top layer here scaled down a little bit. So next what I wanna do is I wanna add a layer mask to this because what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to non-destructively add transparency to this layer. And you'll see what I mean in a second. So right now I will right click on here and go to add layer mask. And I'm gonna choose white full opacity. So I'll click add here. So that gives us a layer mask on here but it's not doing anything yet because on a layer mask, white basically means full opacity and black on a layer mask is going to mean transparency. So just to demonstrate this concept, let me grab a paintbrush here and I have my color set to black. And if I paint black on what is now my layer mask, so I'm clicked on my layer mask, you'll see that that's going to reveal the layer below. So black is creating transparency and that is revealing what is below. I'll hit control Z. So if I take that concept and I apply it to a gradient, so here's my gradient tool here. I've got black and white set as my foreground and background color here. You can click on this icon here to reset your colors and get them to black and white. I'm gonna come down here to my actual gradient and click on that and make sure this goes to either foreground and background HSV or you could do foreground and background RGB. Either one really will work. Anything really where the left side is the black and the right side is gonna be the white color. And then make sure my shape is set to linear. And now what I can do is I can click and drag and hold control while I drag. And what this is going to do is it's going to create a gradient where the left side here is going to be black and the right side is gonna be white, which means everything on the left side of our gradient is going to show through. So it's gonna create transparency, which will show our image below. And then everything on the right side will be white. So it's going to show our top image here because there's no transparency here. And so we're creating this blend here and because I'm in GIMP 2.10, I can adjust this gradient, which is a live gradient until I apply it. So I'm just adjusting this gradient. Once I have it about where I want it, I can hit the enter key and that will apply my gradient. What you'll see now is over here on our layer mask, we have black on the left side of our layer mask. That's why all this is showing below. The bottom layer is showing through. And then on the right side, we have white. And that's why our top layer is still showing on this side. But of course the issue is that this photo is still somewhat centered, whereas this one is way over to the right. So we want these to be sort of aligned. So to do that, I'm gonna click on my mountains layer and then I'll grab my move tool from the toolbox and I'm going to click on this mountains layer and hold control while I drag to the left. That's gonna keep this in straight line mode. And that's going to allow me to move this photo of the model to the left a little bit. And so now these are a little bit more aligned. Let me come back up here to my winter layer and I'm gonna make sure I'm clicked on the actual photo and not on the layer mask. And then I'm going to click and just drag this photo a little bit to the left. And you'll see that what this is allowing us to do is align this layer a little bit better. And so that both of these images are sort of in the same place. All right, so that looks pretty good right here. So as I mentioned, the layer mask is a non-destructive form of adding transparency to a layer. So what that means is that if we come back now that we have both of these images in place where we want them, and we realize that we don't want the gradient in this location that it's currently in now, all I have to do is come up here, click on this layer mask, right click and go to delete layer mask, and that'll get rid of it. And now we're back to our original image. And then I could right click on here, Go back to add layer mask, add that white layer mask again. 
And then I can grab our gradient tool, make sure we're still going from black to white, and I can click and hold control and drag this gradient. And basically I can reposition this gradient based on the new location of our two images. And if I want, I can even swap this. So if I swap the colors, you'll see it's going to reverse the gradient effect. That's not what we want in this case, but just letting you guys know that that is an option. So I'm just going to adjust this a little bit more. I think that looks pretty good right there. So I'll hit the enter key. And now we've combined two images using a layer mask and the gradient tool here in GIMP. So if I wanted to export these two images together, all I have to do is go to File, Export As, I'll just name this Blended Images, and then I'll navigate to the location where I want to save these images, and hit Export. Turn my quality up to 100 if I want the quality all the way up, or I could turn the quality down a little bit if I want to save some room. Maybe if I'm uploading this to a website or something, and then I'll hit export, and there you go. So that's it for this tutorial. Hopefully you guys liked it. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash daviesmediadesign. You can also visit our website at daviesmediadesign.com. You can enroll in our GIMP photo editing course from beginner to pro photo retoucher on Udemy. And you can support our channel and help us grow by becoming a patron on Patreon. And I'll include a link to that as well as all the relevant links from this tutorial in the description of the video. So thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.